In exercise five of this complex wire removal series, we're taking a closer look at holding mats and what we can do to quickly get the best looking shapes together to invisibly remove our top wires. We've got our main wires removed and we need to bring our hair and face back. So let's head back into silhouette. Now all we need to do is just hold in some of the original stuff there. And we can do this in a couple of different ways. Um, I could come with my, my roto here and make these a little bit smaller, but actually it's going to be far easier and, and, and basically far better to just roto these shapes back in again. So roto my face back in and roto the hair back in where I need it to as well. The advantage of that is that it gives us a nice smooth movement with these simple shapes and then builds on top of that movement with the more complex shapes that we need. I hope that makes that makes sense. So we're building big to small. All right. I will be arranging our node tree in a better way very shortly. So uh, don't worry about that. Let's let's just come in and, and build up our roto now. So I can create these holding mats in a couple of different ways. I can do it the you know the old style the the, the regular style, and I'll I'll do that for the for the first one I think, uh, which is to just come in and roto this stuff out normally. So in my roto node, I'm going to add in another layer. I'm going to call this one head head holding, and I'm going to place this behind. The mega plate for a second. We'll, we'll see uh, in just one moment why we're going to do that. Uh, and I'm going to start, I'll actually start on frame one rather than frame zero because frame zero, as we know, is our heavily compressed version. So let's start on frame one instead. And I'm going to create a rough shape for the head and I'm going to use um, some of these circle splines so that I'm not tempted to make uh, these shapes too, um, too complicated. Uh, and at the moment, I've actually got my shape layer set to create Bezier splines. It's not really what I want. So this is something else that we can change up in preferences. So I come to preferences, I come to shape. And if we have a look at primitive type, this is set to Bezier. I'm going to set this to X spline instead. We set this to B spline, X spline or Bezier. It's all up to you. And I hit OK, come back into my primitives. And if I do another shape now, you can see we've got an X spline over here. Excellent. Sorry, X spline alert. No, that doesn't work. We'll, we'll stick with excellent. OK, and I'm just going to create a um, big shape for the for the main skull shape. Maybe bring another point down in here, bring it in there. I'm not going to get too detailed about this unless I really need to. All I want to do is make sure that the area where we're intersecting with the other layer is is perfect. So it means I, need, I do need to bring in another shape or another point for the chin. Bring that in there. I'm not going to worry about the neck. I'm going to do that as a separate shape. So that's fine. Uh, and I will make these other wires on the top a slightly different color so we can see them a bit better. I'll keep my circle red. Okay, so now we've got this here. I'm going to track it in. And we can use like the planar tracker or the mocha planar tracker. Now, if I use the regular planar tracker, so I'm going to come in to my alpha. I could hit A if I wanted to on the keyboard. Uh, and I can change my blend mode here from add to subtract. So this is going to work a little bit like the track mats did in Mocha. Yeah. So I'm going to hit A again. And if I have my head hold in mask selected and my mega plate layer selected, close that up. Then you can see the intersection behind those or between those. I'm only being offered points for tracking where those shapes don't intersect. And change my motion model from uh, perspective to a fine just because this these aren't truly flat surfaces and i'll just track that forward 
Am I looking for 100% perfect um, tracking with this? Uh, no, I'm not, uh, because I'm perfectly happy to come in and uh, adjust the shapes up uh, a little bit later. Uh, and as you'll, you'll have seen, as we went past that first little bit, because we have those wires going over, it's actually quite difficult for us to get a 100% perfect track uh, on the face as it, as it goes through, because we're cutting so much out of it with the, um, with the wire. And when she's clear of the wire on the right hand side, which is at frame 24, I can come in now and let's just come back into our transform mode and let's just transform this back. So I'm holding down control again, uh, command on Mac and just bringing that a little bit into, into place. And I'll scrub backwards and make sure that those areas are going to be where they need to go. So I'm going to come in and do most of the hard work with the transform tool. Control and just distort that in, into place. That's fine. And then in the areas where I need to have a bit more detail, I can use one of the other tools that I have available to me. Now, traditionally, this has been the reshape tool. So just the regular reshape tool. Uh, a couple of versions ago, we were able to use the magnetic reshape tool, which has been one of my favorites, which is coming in and just being able to select tools and, and it works in a, a much more kind of natural feeling kind of way. So the, the closer the points are to where the ones we've selected are the ones that are going to get moved most and the ones further away from the one we've selected is not going to really move uh, at all. But with Silhouette 2021, we got a new tool, which is the brush reshape tool. And this works a bit like a combination of the regular brush tool and the magnetic reshape tool. So you can see if I go over here, if I hold down control or command, I can make this brush bigger or smaller, just as we could do with the regular paintbrush. And as I move this over the shape, you can see some of the points get highlighted and selected, yeah? Now, when I click and drag on this, these move a lot like the um, magnetic reshape tool would move these. So it means I can get very accurate looking um, looking shapes with a minimum amount of work. Let's bring that up. I'm just looking at what's happening over on the areas where the the hair and the the wire um, uh, the wire collide. That's fine. So I'll come over here and just gently nudge this into into place and this brush reshape just feels a lot more kind of natural uh, way of, of working just to bring those into into place without having to just individually uh, change control points that's pretty good i don't need this shape anymore after this after this frame not really doing anything for me what i can do is i can just come over here and I can just turn that off after this frame. So I can toggle visibility using this button in the object list. So if I have a look at the um, A, hit A to look at the alpha overlays. You can see that disappears there. Also see on the timeline, opaque, 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 and then disappears. And with Silhouette 2021 and above, the timeline color will also change to show that uh, this is no longer active, this is no longer opaque anymore. If I was taking this shape out to another application, I can happily just move my, my shape off screen at this point as well. And I'll set this frame to hold. And it'll bounce out. One more little thing with rotoscoping and preferences. If I come to preferences here and I'm in my shape one more time, I could also fade my outline with opacity. And when this is turned on, if I hit OK here, watch what happens to this shape. If I don't have it selected, it will just disappear when the opacity goes to zero. If I do have it selected, obviously, I'm going to be able to see it all the time. Pretty cool. All right, so that's one half. That's the, that's uh, covering our wire on the uh, the right hand side. I'm going to need to do the nose, but we'll do the nose in a minute. 
The other big one is going to be what's happening on the left hand side, of course. So let's uh, let's rename our shape in the object list. We will call this one face right. And I'll come in, I'll create another shape here. I'm going to use the regular reshape tool just to get us into into the right place. And this is just going to describe the hair for me. Bring that into into place here and here. Should be fine. Bring that over there a little bit. Excellent. So keeping the shapes nice and simple. And I'll immediately call this one hair left. For the head holding. And because we created this shape in the same layer as we did with our face, let's just close that down a little bit. We're going to share that same movement. So let's see if that's going to work out. And if we just play that back, you can see that the hair itself is is bouncing around a little bit. It's it's much more suitable for this side of the face. It's a completely different plane we're tracking for the back of the head. So I don't really want to have it there. So I'm going to create another layer for my for my hair. A new layer. Bring my hair in there. And we'll call this one hair holding um it's it's changed place and the reason it's changed place is because when we created it we created it in the layer uh, which had tracking data in we just need to to shrink that down that's you know that makes sense and hold down the alt key when i'm over at the corners to distort that into place there we go Maybe just refine that with me, uh, the, the regular reshape tool. Cool. All right, good. So now we're, we're back where we, where we were with the other shape. Excellent. Let's track this in now. Let's make sure we, we have our hair holding and our mega plate background layers selected so that we get the track mat in again. Um, I could track that in with the planar tracker. Uh, we can try with the mocha tracker as well. See if we get a different result out of that. What frame do we need to start on frame 42 we'll track that forwards again a little bit more until we're out of uh out of danger there which is going to be here frame 54. you can see we're, we're not over the top of that wire anymore okay and then the fun goes back in so we come back into our reshape tool maybe the brush reshape and just check to make sure that where it's going over that our that our edge there is nice and sharp and intersects properly with where the uh, wire is getting removed from. Come to the end, bring it over there. Control or command to make my brush bigger. And let's lock the other layers up. Not accidentally touch any of them. Lovely. Cool, that's working pretty well. Let's have a look now at how that looks just in the composite. Interesting, yeah? Okay, the reason for that obviously is because we've now manually turned our make plate background to subtract and we've got the hold in set to add. So if we have a look at what that's looking like, let's take the make plate back to add and we'll do the head hold in and the head the hair hold in, set those both to subtract. So if we look at the alpha mode on that, and we'll change the layer order. So we can bring the uh, mega plate background down to the bottom, not actually inside there, just down to the bottom. Thank you very much. And now let's invert our head hold in and our hair hold in. You can see the importance of the need for order in your layers. Layer processing is from top to bottom. So the hair and head hold in layers at the top are subtracted from the big wire shapes on the layer below turn off the overlays or the outlines for a second and we can see that's now only going to be feeding that into our composite let's see how that's going to look a 
much nicer. I mean, there's still areas we need to, to change. There's a couple of things we need to change. I need to add in another one for the nose. Maybe fix up the neck here, which I haven't, haven't done yet. I'm also going to change the overall blur on this roto, which is set to five. I'm going to turn that down to zero. Get rid of that. Turn off any keyframing on it. Because now we've got multiple shapes. Some of these I want to remain sharp and some of these I want to stay blurry. So I can come in to my mega plate layer and I can just blur that mega plate layer up. I'm going to blur it too much. We'll just blur it up a little bit so we can't see the can't see the wires and we can't see the sharp edge. I can even change my blur type to outer, but that might be a bit much with that particular blur. Get that centered. So we don't want to blur inwards too much. We keep that centered and we can blur that. It means we keep our hair holding and our face holding nice and sharp. Much better. So I'm going to go away now and I'm going to finish off this little bit of roto, the holding roto, doing the same sort of thing, bringing in an, uh, another shape on over on the, uh, the left hand side and making sure that the right hand side also has its hair put in there. And I'll be tidying up things like the nose and the neck as well. Same techniques as we've seen before. And I'll, uh, I'll be back in, in just a moment once I've done that. This exercise has focused on the use of multiple layers and roto shapes to create our final mat for the top wires. We saw how the different trackers handle the movement of the head in different ways. And in the next part, we'll be looking at organizing our node tree. And I'll give you some tips about maximizing RAM cache with oversized images. My name is still Ben Brownlee, and I'll see you again in exercise six.